Hey, what's up, guys? Wanted to talk about life after keto real quick. I'm about to pick up my boys from school, so you probably see some kids in here in a second. Um, this came up on a client call this week, and it's something that's come up on a bajillion client calls, and so I just thought I'd put a word out to anybody else who has done keto, or if you're thinking about ever doing keto, and giddying up for not being keto forever, okay? Because 99% of people are not going to be keto for the rest of their lives. Even if you think you're going to, you're not I'm telling you. <laughs> and I actually don't think it's optimal for most people unless you're using it therapeutically. So this is it. Even if you're keto right now, this applies to you too. But when you come off of a ketogenic diet, the biggest thing that I see is that people think that they can still just eat all the, they, they, you've gotten programmed that like fatty foods are better. Fatty foods are better. And when you come off of keto, you got to change some of that. You can't just keep eating endless ribeyes and butter all over everything and boatloads of salad dressing and olive oils, like tons of it. And like two full avocados and all this stuff and be eating carbs again. And this is what I see is like, I'll have people track their food because most people aren't tracking their food and they're like, this is what they say. Oh, I eat keto-ish. Unless you have a really fast metabolism, if you were eating keto-ish, I can guarantee, pretty much guarantee you are not actually in ketosis. So guess what that means? That means that your body is now running off glycogen instead of ketones. So all that fat you're eating, it's not being turned into ketones. It's being used as like extra. So your body, if you're not eating very many carbs, your body's trying to run off the little bit of carbs that you're giving it. So your energy will kind of suck. This is what we call low carb limbo because you don't have any ketones and you don't have very many carbs either. And then, so you're running off those little bit of carbs and then all that extra fat you're eating, whatever's not used in the moment for immediate energy. I made a post about this earlier, but I want to get on video and say it, okay? Um, or for steroid sex hormones, cell membranes, you know, your brain, whatever's not used immediately, there's nowhere to put that fat, the extra, except body fat. Do we understand this? Carbs are different. If you eat more carbs than you need at that exact moment, you got big ass storage tanks for carbs, your liver and all your muscles are storage tanks for carbs. So the average, I put this in my book. It's in short term keto. It's something along the lines of like the average person can store like, I think it's like a hundred to 150 grams of stored carbohydrate in their liver. And then depending on how much muscle mass you have anywhere from like an extra 250 up to like 800 grams of carbs in your muscles. So when people are saying carbs make you fat, I'm like, <laughs> if you're not in ketosis, carbs are way less likely to make you fat than a bunch of extra body of dietary fat. So how much healthy fat is appropriate to eat with carbs? I love 40, 30, 30, 40% protein. This, and I recommend weight training with this. Okay. But I love 40% protein, 30% fat and carbs. And you can have wiggle room, especially women. I love to share this because your macronutrient needs are going to fluctuate depending on where you're at in your cycle. So as long as your protein stays high, if you're having those days where intuitively you're like, I need fat, then you can go a little higher on the fat and take some off of the carbs. And if you need a little bit more carbs, just take some off of the fat. But you can't have a bunch of fat and carbs <laughs> and expect to lose body fat if it's extra, right? We can't be adding in carbs to our high fat lifestyle. And if any of you have actually ever dialed it in with keto, like you actually tracked your food, you will know that it's not really that much fat. Like my keto programs, I got a bajillion of them. It's not that much. It's, it doesn't look like this crazy high fat lifestyle. It's like a steak salad with a little bit of bacon and gorgonzola on it with a little bit of dressing. And then like an egg scramble with bacon or sausage for breakfast cooked in a little bit of butter. And then like salmon with some butter and some vegetables with maybe a little olive oil on them. Like it's not like some crazy, like all I'm doing is eating fat bombs, crazy, crazy, crazy levels of fat. That's why a lot of people like... A lot of, if you're very obese or you have really high blood sugar, you have a lot, you'll get a huge metabolic benefit from doing keto and you kind of feel like you can eat whatever and you'll start losing weight because your body can finally tap into its fat stores. But you get to a certain point. That is why I'm just being blunt AF right now 
we see a lot of people go from obese to like still sort of overweight in the keto community and they can't get any past that. That's it. That's the end of the road for a lot of people. <laughs> my kids are attacking my car. I told you they were coming. All right, guys, I'm on an Instagram live just so you know. Say hi. Here's Kyle. Hi. Hi Micah. <laughs> okay, so when you're transitioning off of keto, if you want help with that, that's what my book, Short Term Keto, is. That is what the meal plan and training plan in the book is, okay? But I'll just tell you, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to start dropping your fat a little bit and re increasing your carbs a little bit. You could do it all at once if you want. You just might get a little effed in your gut microbiome because if you're not used to processing that many fibers, like that might be a change for you. So I like gradual, um, but eventually what we're trying to, I'm getting you to eventually is that 40, 30, 30 I just talked about. 40% protein, 30% fat and carbs. And you, like I said, you've got that 60% of fat and carbs. You can have some wiggle room. It doesn't have to be exact but think of it, those are the two energy sources. So if you keep protein high, protein's not an energy source. So that's why eating a higher protein diet makes it really easy to lose body fat. That's why bodybuilders eat so much of it. <laughs> and when you're weight training, it's going towards something, right? It works really well together. Let's see. At what phase in a woman's cycle would you see the most benefit of additional carbs for maximum mood and hormone benefits? Uh, during the luteal phase, the second half of the cycle. So you guys know how you're craving carbs? You're craving carbs for a reason. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that there's, I've done that. I've done like moon cycle nutrition plans and all that stuff. I don't really find them to be that necessary to get that strategic with it. I say if you do the 40, 30, 30 and you give yourself wiggle room in that, within that 60% of fat and carbs to like have higher fat, just drop your carbs down a little bit or go higher carbs when your body wants them and drop fat. It works really well. You keep protein high and then you're not going to go to energy excess or calorie excess, right? And, you know, I don't love tracking forever, but if you're trying to dial shit in, you need to track. And if you're coming off of keto and you're in this crap, dude, I'm like not losing any weight or I'm gaining weight. I guarantee you, you're eating way more fat and carbs than you think you're eating. And you need to track a little bit so you get a reality check. Postmenopausal. So postmenopausal, like, it just depends. And I'm curious, do you mean macros? Like, if you have high blood sugar and you're postmenopausal, I recommend doing a phase of keto to get that restored. But then after that, I always like to see everybody go back to balance. Balance macronutrients. Um, but like, I don't, you know, it, it would be the same, same path for postmenopausal people, but you know, doing some intermittent fasting here and there or keto or something like that. If you need to, you might not need to. Because if they're obese, I already know they got metabolic dysfunction or you've got high blood sugar and you're trying to take care of that. You don't, that's not the only path. You don't have to do keto, but it just makes it a lot easier if you have high blood sugar because you're not going like up and down and you can also get your blood sugar down enough so that you can start getting into fat stores easier. Um, do you think 1200 calories? is okay for a 42 year old woman, five foot three tall. Uh, it depends on how much you weigh and what your activity level is like. Generally for active populations who are like weight training, working out, I like to do um, weight in pounds times 10 for a calorie deficit. But then there's a lot of variables on that too. If somebody's got a hypothyroidism, they might need less than that. If they got a fast metabolism, they might need more than that. Right. And the way I kind of gauge that, um, is like the more muscular and active and lean a person already is, they're probably going to need a little more than that. Right. But you got to play with it. That's all in my app too, by the way, there's tons of nutrition stuff in my app. If you're on there and you haven't checked that section out, I lay it all out because I want you guys to be able to do this shit yourselves. I don't want you to need me forever. But anyway, I just want to drop that about the post keto, like watch yourself. You can't keep eating this super crazy high fat diet and then be adding all your fruit to it or whatever, all your carbs to it. And then 
not drop the fats down at all. There's a mindset switch that has to happen. You're going to have to switch to some leaner fats and like not douse everything in fat, or you're just going to go into a calorie excess like crazy. And when you're running off glucose, which is very easy to do, if anybody has ever been keto, you got to watch that shit like a hawk to actually stay in ketosis. And I know you guys know that. So it's really easy to just go right back into running off glucose. And if you're running off glucose, that means all the fat you're eating is not being converted into ketones. So like I said, whatever is not immediately being used for basic processes, the rest is going to fat storage. So we can't be, I don't rec, I mean, a low carb diet. Yes. As a transition coming off keto. Awesome. Per forever. I just think your energy level and your workouts could be so much higher if you boosted carbs up a little bit more and drop the fats down. It's just, it's better. Let's see. Uh, I can't really read that cause I ain't driving. So sorry. <laughs> um, all right, Micah, any last words? What Micah, do you like keto? <laughs> no. <laughs> I had these guys do keto for a little while. They're still traumatized. Sorry. Sorry, I'm not the inspiring mom whose kids just Those love keto. keto. <laughs> what? Those keto cookies are so bad. bad. And the brownies. <laughs> like, that tastes like normal. Every time I make anything for them that's like a treat, they're like, is this keto? <laughs> I think they're good. Kyle, any wise words of wisdom? Uh, eat food. Thanks, Kyle. Eat food. Yes, eat food. Eat real food. My book is everything. Thank you. Appreciate it, girl. I, um, short term keto goes over. Short term keto does go over all of this and way more. And I try to make it as fun and enjoyable as possible. I really put my try to put my voice in there and as you know, all my heart and soul. There's tons of research. I went. My little overachiever side came out hard on that book, and I worked really hard on it. So I hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope you get a lot of value out of it. And I am gonna go. All right. Much love. Thanks for joining me. Bye.